How's it going, everybody? I am back. I got a little project here, um, kind of another refresh project. This, of course, is my third rail Q1, which I've owned for quite some time now. I was asked um, in the comments in my Q2 uh, final run video there if I would be revisiting the Q1 at some point. And I thought, well, yeah, it's probably a good idea. It is due for uh, a little bit of maintenance. And uh, while I have it in the shop, I might as well see if I can improve upon some of the efforts I, I have uh, pursued on, on this project in the past. So we'll uh, get into it here. Um, we'll get it into the shop and we'll talk about it some more. This engine came out around 2003, 2004. And uh, like I said, I didn't acquire this till like 2013 or 2014, just as I was starting to really work on this layout when I moved here. And uh, I had it for a while, and it kind of languished around for a while, and then I, I got it running again um, probably later in 2014 or 2015. But um, when I first got it, it didn't run. I, I got a real good deal on it. The, the guy must have gotten frustrated with it or something. And uh, when I got it apart, I realized that um, somebody had put Electric Railroad Cruise in here and uh, Electric Railroad like um, Sound Commander. And it had like a generic uh, N and W kind of hooter whistle. Um, originally, this would have had a full complement of uh, Train America EOB in it. And uh, obviously, at some point, the uh, previous owner decommissioned it and put an electric railroad. But it wasn't working. And I had found that the boards were fine. Uh, there was just some antenna issue. All right, so here's what it's looking like. Electric Railroad Cruise Commander and uh, three board setup. This is the uh, the S1 6100 sounds in here and a big speaker, but it's a half watt. I wonder if I can move some stuff around in here and maybe fit one of these uh, fit one of these nice speaker enclosures I have from Lionel. Or maybe I'll order one of those uh, 50 millimeter fat boys and see what I can move around in here. Let's see. Looks like the whole tender shell is the antenna. That drives me nuts. See all the tape? I hate this. this it never goes back together the same way twice. So I might see if I can fix that up. The funny thing about revisiting an old project is to uh, sort of relive some of the issues you dealt with and, and what you came up with for a solution at the time. So in this little segment, I'm just pointing out that I, I did in fact bury the uh, antenna in the coal pile, uh, much in the way I like to do now. And it keeps me from having to try isolating the tender shell from the frame, makes for a cleaner setup. I can get rid of all that electrical tape and uh, it's much easier to service. Looking at this Katie mount, I might, make something to fit in here um, where I can fasten it from over top, you know, 3D printed style, and then have the mounts underneath so the coupler is serviceable without screwing through like that. So also I'm going to try to rearrange these boards. Um, I have about 45 millimeters of ceiling height in here if I want to raise this. Uh, like I did in the uh, in the Q2s where I just kind of cantilevered the one board over the other. I may flip this guy around and uh, basically to see if I could mount um, a, a, a bigger uh, speaker enclosure in here. So I want to clean all this tape off and get all this. This was from the original electric railroad board. Before it actually sounded good, it was just something for like uh, a Class A or, or a Y6 or something, or, or even maybe like a like an Allegheny. Didn't sound bad, but it was just not as close to uh, what a Penzi duplex sounded like as um, some of Lionel's sets. So let me strip this all off here and get this set up. It's always nice when they have the program run bezel plate. I do not want to drill any more holes than I have to, but as you can see, this thing's been through a couple owners, you know. Um, so we'll clean this all up and see what we got. 
So just a closer examination of the KD adapter I had set up on this thing years ago. And the one thing I'd like to do is correct the longitudinal position of that draft gear. I wanted it flush with that end platform. Um, that end platform actually sticks out a little further than the draw beam of the tender. So while the uh, KD adapter was strong enough, I, I think I can come up with a better 3D printed design. Um, I did find that that's cracked and I could try to repair that, but uh, let's see how bad it is. I, I, may, uh, I may just put a torch to it here and see if I can get that to stick back together. All right, so I got my little burns matic hand torch here and fixed the uh, cracked coupler pocket here. So not too bad. I didn't burn down the shop either, so that's good. Um, you'll never see it, but it's nice and solid and gives me a nice feeling that I fixed it. So moving on, I'll drill out the uh, hole pattern now for the speaker and uh, try laying out the components. Should be good. I'm actually gonna use this speaker enclosure I got from Lionel. This is for the uh, K4s, the uh, Legacy K4s, the X K-Line K4s with that short tender. This is about the only engine I can find that'll accommodate the width of this thing. So you can see it's it's pretty low profile, but it's very wide. And this tender, because it doesn't have that wide lip along the bottom, can host the width of it. Um, what's nice about this is this is about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch, maybe shorter than uh, that J1A enclosure I used. So this, this ought to work pretty good. In the process of making a speaker pattern for the Q1, I wanted it to match the old one, so I'm in Tinkercad. Close enough, I think, for a speaker grill. Just the drill pattern, so I could start the holes. I wanted, I wanted it to match this one, so let's give it a try. All right, so it fits on the frame and into the uh, tender shell. This tender shell has a generous clearance, like I said. Normally, third rail would run like a rail all the way across here, but uh, pretty cool. I, I was able to clear these mounts. Definitely plenty of height with this low-profile jobby. And uh, now I can uh, start laying out the other components. Um, I'll just have this here in place so I can figure out where I'm going to land the... Uh, or just relocate the the original components on here. Like I said, I wanted to get a better speaker set up in here. So as I progress with the reinstallation of the components, I just wanted to show you some of the iterations of the KD mount. The basic idea with these 3D printed mounts is to center the KD, set it up to the correct height, and then also make it as a uh, kind of a bolt-on assembly so i had the height way off on this so it usually takes me a few tries to get these right but these are like 18 minute prints at the most so it's not too bad and you can see here some different mounting options i had the uh, through holes are for the tender mount the tender shell mount and there's also some through holes for some optional frame mounting here's the um receptacle i always try to put in for the uh for the brake hose so on the final iteration of the 3D printed uh, KD adapter, I was able to get the height correct. I was also able to adjust the fore aft position of the uh, draft gear so I could get the coupler face a little further out um, beyond the uh, platform that kind of goes over the draw beam of the tender. Okay, so that took one more iteration than I like, but we've got a nice matchup. I even had to uh, sneak a little shim in there, and uh, I have a bunch of 3D printed shims I bought off eBay. I'll probably buy another set off, off that guy. Um, these are pretty helpful. 
So I think we're all set, finally. I think it's a pretty clean setup. All right, so the components are going back on. And uh, I have a new Rail Sounds 4 standoff. I adjusted the height because um, I don't need to cantilever this over the other boards. And I made these um, bus bar strips on here too to land all the power connectors, uh, you know, all the power wiring. That way, I'm not jumpering power from one board to another through their, their terminals. I kind of hate that now. So I try to have a central terminating point for all the power connections. So these brass strips screwed into my uh, rail sounds mount. Seems to work. You see I ground out a spot for the uh, heat sink on the cruise commander. I'm gonna goop it up with some uh, heat sink grease right now before mounting it. I'm gonna move on to figuring out the wiring for this harness. <laughs> this eight wire harness um, that third rail used uh, during the EOB days. And I have a suspicion it's a it's gonna be really close to my old uh, high iron K4, which I sold a couple years ago and I now regret. So um, might also be kind of close to my third rail M1B that had EOB till it exploded, but that's another story for another video. So I'm gonna trace this out on the locomotive side pull it over here might as well get the shell off it and uh get into it all right so i have the mighty q1 disassembled here and uh just looking it over and what i want to do is go through the wiring trace it all out see where it lands on the uh, shrouded connector here and maybe do a little maintenance on the chassis do some lubing cleaning stuff like that uh, i want to see if i can clean up some of this wiring and investigate the possibility of putting a chuff uh, pickup somewhere on one of these drivers. Um, right now I have two magnets on one of the tender wheels. And with that ratio, you have uh, two chuffs over 18 millimeters. These are 40 millimeter drivers or 77 inches in real life. So that gives me about like 4.4 repeating chuffs per rev. So I'm not happy with that. Um, what I'd like to do is trigger chuff right off one of the drivers. So we'll investigate that. And uh, like I said, general cleanup. I was just looking at the smoke unit. Uh, it's like an old fashioned Lionel 8057. It's just a constant voltage puffer. And I think it's the old one that had that 27 ohm resistor, um, unprotected, uh, PC board up there that used to just melt away um, in too much usage or whatever. Uh, luckily, this thing's never been smoked as far as I can tell, and, and the uh, smoke unit has been off ever since I've owned it. Um, I'm going to wire it in, but I'm going to leave it off. It, it goes through this selector switch, so uh, there's a yellow wire coming from maybe the, the uh, cruise commander there, and um, it's a selector. It's a single pole double throw the other side would probably get connected to the uh track power so you can run it conventionally and that's what the switch says underneath if i can find it for you so i'll just restore that but i'll never use it I, i'm just gonna kind of go through this thing and clean it up this is kind of neat if you remember my q2 i didn't have um port uh plugs on the uh, gearboxes so it's kind of nice uh, for lubrication and uh, again kind of what third rail does when I say um, you know these drivers have some lateral slop I don't mean like wore out or anything like that I mean they're given some lateral freedom to help guide the engine through curves and stuff like that so that's what's going on here so if I set up a reed switch and a magnet in here I'm gonna have to be real careful so, um, you know, I don't lose the chuff if the driver drifts away. So anyway, I'm going to go through this and start tracing out the wiring. And uh, to confuse myself even more, every time I documented the wiring on these other engines, I labeled the uh, connectors kind of backwards. So I made myself a more graphical version and I will follow this. So... 
we'll get started. So here's my uh, cable whip coming out of the boiler. So um, as you can see, I've got the uh, third rail and the yellow wire coming from the uh, cruise commander through the tether, through that uh, three-way switch, a single pole double throw. It's gonna go through this. Um, I got this JST connector and then it'll go to the smoke unit ground. And then I got um, the R2LC controlled headlight and just power on the cab light. And I changed out the resistors for 2K because I want I want them to be kind of dull. Um, I like having a permanently wired cab light in a weird way because it's a good track power monitor, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and then there's a ground connection. I'm using uh, some of my JST connectors. I'm actually using a five pin on here just in case um, some other feature gets added to this someday, or if somebody else ends up with this engine, they can add markers or something. So I'll, I'll uh, crimp up the uh, female shrouded side here and that'll, that'll connect here on this uh, back of the engine to replace this guy. I forgot what these were called. These are very common. So I'm gonna disassemble all this back here and just clean it all up. This is, this is a nice touch, this shroud around the uh, flywheel. I like that a lot. How many times have you stuffed all these cables back into your uh, firebox and put your engine back together and, and just sat there wondering if you know, you're know you rubbing on the flywheel? This is pretty neat. And you can see it's got the old paper encoder here. That was for EOB, the chuff and the uh, speed pickup. And it was notched here. They would have mounted the EOB pickup sensor around here somewhere. So, kind of cool. It's coming along. All right, so you can see I have the uh, reed switch in place and I have it grounded to the frame. And uh, I don't know if you can see the magnets in here. I kind of got ahead of myself. You see one of the magnets there. And uh, I've been collecting even more magnets lately. I have some super tiny ones. Let's see if I can find them. They're so small. These are the smallest I had up until now. These are about one millimeter thick, maybe two, two and a half in diameter. But I found even smaller ones. Now I have to uh, experiment to see which reed switch they might trigger, but these might be really useful for tight spaces in between the driver and the frame like you usually deal with. So I had to set this up kind of transverse, stuck its nose kind of into the rim here. I was able to mount these um, magnets kind of inside the rim like that, sort of inside there. So uh, I'll put a dot of glue on there when I'm happy with the, the spacing, but while I'm waiting for, I'm making some wire clamps on the 3D printer to ho to uh, help route these wires, kind of experimental. I decided to check out the gearboxes and they look pretty good. Um, gears are in good shape. The, uh, the old grease is kind of ugly, but it's not hardened up. So that's good. It's still, still kind of uh, okay consistency, I guess. So I'm gonna clean out some of it and then, uh, I'll be able to use these grease plugs to replenish it when it's back together. So something interesting on this uh, particular engine, um, I noticed they modeled rockers on these uh, on this trailing truck here, which is kind of cool. Um, it goes into like a sort of a rocker seat on this tail beam or whatever. And uh, I just got this book recently off Amazon. And um, it's really cool. It, it goes through all the parts of a steam locomotive. It, it's a little bit dry. It's like written for, uh, it was explained that it was kind of written for like a uh, uh, technical college or something or like a correspondence trade school or something. But what's cool about it is you, I'm starting to recognize more and more parts, you know, and uh, the, the section I'm reading about now is the suspension, you know, how the these trailing and um, pilot trucks are actually like kind of tripod supports for the front 
you know, the smoke box and the fire box, and uh, it starts to make sense. And then what you get an appreciation for is like kind of the art that goes into building these locomotives to kind of represent a scale model, yet make it go around like, you know, 072 curves, you know? And uh, just something kind of neat. I just noticed this on the bench, you know, they did a pretty good job putting the rockers in there. So yeah, I recommend this. You can get this for like 13 bucks off Amazon. I'd snag one. So one of the challenges with wiring these engines is uh, wire routing. And uh, as you can see here, these are the pickup roller leads and they're kind of just CA to the side of the frame. And there's this kind of narrow section under the motor. It's notched out, but I didn't want to run any more wires through there. So I thought about routing the, the wires up over the uh, motor. So I came up with these like headband looking things. I, I printed them up and uh, just wanted to see if they'd work. Well, they were kind of floppy. And then um, I had the trouble of, you know, I still had to do something with this wire routing. Um, I could have made another maybe clip or something, you know, it still might be an option. But uh, I came out with this guy here, came up with this guy, um, kind of a wire tray. And that, that puts the, uh, puts the uh, lead right out over the flat, over the uh, pulleys there. Oh, I'll give it a try. So this is kind of the general idea. I've seen this done on other engines, you know, but uh, sometimes I'll make them out of metal or whatever. Um, you know, it's better than just zip tying the wire to the motor. Um, it gets me safely over the pulleys here and it won't get tangled up. So I printed these little wire guides too. There's a, uh, these guys you know and this 3d printing stuff you know some of it looks kind of primitive but it, it's so useful and if i got a better printer i could probably make prettier parts um so maybe someday here's the uh underneath so that's the wire routing i found a place to sneak up by the uh by the roller there there's another one of my 3d printed wire holders I guess so I don't know now I'm going to see if it will actually fit in the engine it should there's a big long slot in the boiler just ahead of the uh, motor to clear the pulleys so here's the uh, shrouded tether receiver going back together and I just I came up with a wiring diagram here so you can see I've got power motor smoke headlight and chaff and I got a spare if I ever want to add a waving engineer or something like that <laughs> so I'm gonna get this back together I do like this access hatch that's, that's a pretty neat feature for serviceability so. cool here's the other end of that boiler shell connector oh crap there was my cab light what the heck happened there all right, it's fixed. All right, let's get the boiler back on. I'll try to do this one-handed. This one is not that bad to get back together, as you can see. We're on. Cool. Well, I figure while we're at it, we might as well change out these uh, crew figures here. So I've got a selection to think about. All right, so I chose my crew here. I'm using a, an Artista 1522 and an 1175. This is what the uh, original crew looked like. And really nice seats, but I had to make new ones for the Artista figures so I could get, get the uh, elbows on the windowsill there. So I'm making a new 3D printed seat for the engineer, just a little bit shorter, just to get this arm down on the window frame. So my 3D printed seats are kind of primitive, definitely not as nice as these, but you'll never really see them. All right, so everything's back together, everything works. Um, right now I am going and I am phasing my chuff magnets. What I mean by phasing my chuff magnets is 
I am getting the uh, chuff to trigger on top dead center, bottom dead center, um, I guess forward dead center and reverse dead center, you know, uh, 0, 90, 180, 270, or 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever you want to think of it as, but uh, this is what I'm going for. Um, That's all. Very simple. So uh, what happens is you choose a crank pin, you know, um, and on this engine, I've got crank pins. All right, stop that. Hold on a second. I've got some crank pins out of phase with each other, front and rear set of drivers. They're about 90 out. And the idea is I set one of the first magnets to trigger um, at like say 12 o'clock and then what I used to do is I used to make these little markings and then rotate the drivers and uh, this time around I made a very crude 3d printed template this is really bad looking but it totally worked once I set the first magnet I used this awful looking thing and I'll, I'll probably make a better one someday when I get more time um, just to set my markings and a curious thing you'll find when you're doing this, if you're a, as obsessed as I am, you'll find that you ha may have to advance one or two of the magnets or, re or uh, maybe set it back a little bit just to get an even chuff. I'm, I'm really obsessed with getting that right because if it's out of square, you'll notice it, you know. And, and if you notice, I am using uh, just a generic chip and this is uh, probably a generic chip from one of my th earlier third rails. Um, and it's a non-articulated chuff or a non-duplex chuff. So what Lionel does, um, you have a single input. It's basically a contact closure. You can, you can send it to the um, cruise commander board under here. Um, if you're really savvy, you can figure out where it goes to um, on this board. Um, there is an input. Um, into the soundboard. I'm not using it though. And what Lionel does with their duplex and articulated chuffs is they, they have some simulated driver to driver um, phasing uh, effects and that's based on the crank pin phasing. Now I'm not a hundred thousand percent sure that chuff exhaust sounds are actually phased with crank pin but to me that's what it always looks like and uh that's what I'm going with. So this is just a test bed set of sounds right now to phase up my magnets. Now I'll just put a little dot of CA on each one and I shouldn't have any problem. Um, these drivers are kind of nice because I could get away with some slightly larger magnets. You can see they live on the uh, inside face of the driver. So they're not going to go anywhere. This is the Lion Master T1 set. I'm going to plug it in and we can give it a listen. All right, so this is the Lion Master T1 set. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> What do you think? I really like that sound set. I think I'm gonna run with it. Um, let's look closely at the chuff. I'll show you the uh, the effect, and you've probably heard this before if you're familiar with Lionel stuff. So you can kind of hear.
You know, some people used to call it double chuff or skip chuff, echo chuff. Let's see if I can increase the speed. So you can hear some different things happening at different speeds. So for a review, I mean, this is kind of a refresh project. I corrected the chuff. I got perfect null math, four chuffs per rev with a uh, duplex chuff sound set from Lionel. I got some better speakers. I get a I got a better board layout here. And this was an experiment. I don't know if I talked about this, but um, I put these uh, brass um, bus bars in here. And I was a little nervous. I have them fastened with some small hardware. And I was a little nervous about doing this soldering to this because, you know, PLA um, has such a low melting um, temperature. But, man, I didn't have any trouble at all. So this keeps me from jumping power connections, you know, from, from this board to this board and then, you know, down to my rollers. Um, every power connection is separate and, you know, I can disconnect the sounds if I really want to without, you know, screwing something else up. And um, just a nice way of doing things. So I kept my original auxiliary roller. I'm not gonna mess with that. But I did add some ground pickups. And these these connect up to the bus bar. I left the original magnet switch in here. I just, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it in there. Like I said, that was giving me 4.44 repeating chuffs per rev, and now I have four. And that makes me happy, because I'm just getting a little weird about this sort of stuff. And I finally got to use my K4 uh, speaker enclosure. That, Like I said, this thing was so wide, and this was the first tender I found um, that would host it. And as, as you know, I have one of my KD adapters in here, my, my one-piece KD adapter and uh, made some repairs to the frame, plugged some holes. So it looks a little better than it did. Like I said, I got this, it actually wasn't in that great a shape. I mean, this thing even, it looked like it was in a damp basement. You can see a little bit of rust here and there and stuff, but uh, this thing's gonna ride with style now. And uh, not that it wasn't running, you know, it was, an, it was a great runner. It was just uh, overdue for some, uh, fixing up, you know, I had kind of a weak speaker in there. And here's another excuse to play around with my 3D printer for, for making, you know, adapter parts and fixtures. So now I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna put it, put the rest of it back together. Um, and I'm going to uh, do a little cleanup on the weathering, probably respray the drivers just, just a little bit. As you can see, this thing's, it's had some fun on my layout. So we'll get to it and then maybe do a little test run video and uh, maybe film a run video with it uh, eventually. I guess some more time. So like I said, this engine has seen a little action on this layout. So I don't know why these drivers are so chipped up. Maybe I didn't do a good job cleaning them when I uh, weathered it the first time. So I went and cleaned up as much as I could and I'm just gonna give this uh, just a quick puff of some grimy black just to uh, recode everything. Um, I made a little cheater plug with this guy, um, just directly to the motor. Someday I'm going to build a uh, weathering turntable. So that's my little cheater setup right now. So let's get a little paint on this guy and uh, you see I did some streaking like I've been doing lately. It's just a minor touch up really. We're almost ready to go back on the layout. 